All right, so After Effects is basically a uh, it's a compositing tool essentially, and it is a you can think of it like a little factory where a lot of tiny elements come in together to create an end result. This can be visual effects for uh, movies. This can be animations, infographics, grading for videos and film. There's a lot of things that After Effects can do, and we're going to go through just the basics of its functionality. And at the end of this video, we'll also create a very simple motion graphics project just so that we can get your feet wet and give you an idea of what this thing is actually capable of. Now we'll go through very slowly. I'm not going to rush and encourage you to have After Effects open and follow along so that you can keep up with what we're going to be talking about. We're going to first talk about the user interface. This is the first thing that you need to learn whenever you are using a new program. After the interface, we're going to go through hotkeys and shortcuts and some of the basic tools. And then we will learn about composition and render settings, the settings that you need to render out your final video. And then after that, we'll get into the basic motion graphics. Now, this motion graphics project is going to be very simple. We're not going to do anything too complicated, and it is ideal for you. So all the elements are ready for you. You can go ahead and download them, but we'll move on to that once we finish all the basics. Okay, so when you first open After Effects, it will look something like this. Now, if you have After Effects open, you have varying versions of it. I am currently using After Effects 2020. That's the most recent version at the, at the time of creating this video tutorial. And it is essentially the same. Not much has changed over the years. Some features have been tweaked. Some effects, for example, have been removed or made obsolete and replaced with better ones. That's really inconsequential to what we're learning here. All we're going to do is learn the bare basics and usually won't matter what version you use. So we'll go ahead and just get started with the basics. First of all, this is what the interface will look like. Now, if it doesn't look like this, it might look something like this. If we go to this default and you'll have all these tabs right here that can be collapsed and expanded. We're not going to be using that. We're just going to use the standard one. And if you have the standard already open, or if you can't get there, you can go into Window, Workspace, and then select Standard. And if Standard doesn't look like what I've shown you right now, you can go ahead and reset to Saved Layout. Now, if you reset to Saved Layout, you've noticed that we've lost one of the tabs here. This is called the Effects Controls. Let's just go ahead and open this because we need to use this. Let's go to Window, and then go down, and make sure Effects Controls is enabled. We can also drag and drop all of these tabs like so. These can be docked just about anywhere in the interface to your liking. This is your viewport, also known as the Composition tab. This is where all of your visual, the end result of your visuals are shown. Typically, you'll be going between high resolution and low resolution or preview resolution just to make things a little bit faster when it comes to editing. A little bit more on this later. Down here, we have the timeline. This is where all of your elements such as images, layers, nulls, solid shapes, all these things will be put in here in this little timeline. And then you can adjust based on the timing, create keyframes and create expressions. So these two panels are the main panels that you'll be looking at really, okay? The next thing is the project tab. This is where you'll be importing a lot of your images, your vectors, your sound files, anything that is related to the media that you want to create. This can be also organized into bins or folders by just clicking this button right here. And these folders can be renamed and such, or you can organize them by dragging and dropping them and it's based on how you want to organize your project, but I'm not going to get into that for now. All you really need to know right now is that this is where all of your elements will be stored, and this will tell you exactly what is in the current project. Over here, you have the Effects and Presets panel. Now notice you've got a search bar right here. So if we were to type something like Glow, G-L-O-W, it will immediately search for any of the effects that are related to what you have typed in here. This is a very fast way to access effects that you already know about. Up here, you have the effects controls, and this is where anything that you have in the effects and presets, they will be dragged and dropped into one of your layers here. And what this will show is all the attributes of the effects that are available in that particular layer. 
It's best to show you, so let's go ahead and just by way of example give you a quick demonstration of how this works. So what we want to do, the first thing we want to do is usually to create a composition. I will explain these settings a little bit later, but for now just use the default settings and hit OK. Once you create a composition, this is basically where your canvas is. You can enable and disable the transparency grid. Let's go ahead and create our first layer, which is under Layer, New, and Solid. This will create a black solid, or if you want, you can change the color to something else. I'm going to select blue just for the sake of this. Go ahead and OK. And now you can see we've created a very simple layer right here. This is the solid, and it can be dragged around based on the timing of this entire timeline. If you want to play through this timeline, just simply hit Space. And this will play through the entire timeline and it, any other elements over that you import in here will show up over in your Composition tab. Let's press Space to cancel that. Another thing we can do is create text layers. So let's go ahead and create a new text layer. So under Layer, New, Text. And I'm going to type my text. Now notice we've got two layers right now. One layer is holding the text itself and the other layer is holding the solid right here. We can change the settings for the text. If you head up into Window, you can go down here and you can bring up Paragraph. This will allow you to change the alignment. We're going to keep that centered. If you go into Window again, let's go up and bring up Character. And this is where your fonts will be available. Simply double click to select them all and then you can go ahead and grab whatever font you prefer. You can also adjust the strokes. Select the color of the text. Even select the stroke color. Now by way of example, let's go ahead and add our effects here. Remember the glow effect? Just type glow. What we want to do is we want to drag and drop that on top of our text layer right here. And this will create a very simple glow. Now up here is where the effects controls will display all of the attributes for that particular effect. We can go ahead and just adjust that. It's pretty fun to play around with these settings, so go ahead and experiment and you'll find that there are many effects that you can do to create what you want. Now let's go ahead and add some animation. If we go ahead and expand the layer right here, you can see there's an arrow. Let's go ahead and click down and then we'll click Transform. These are the very basic attributes that you can play around with. Let's go ahead and play with position. So at frame 0, we're going to click the stopwatch this will create a little keyframe right here. This little diamond shape indicates that there's a keyframe set. But first let's go to around one second and then using the position you can go ahead and drag the numbers like so. You can also drag it around inside of a viewport. And within that one second you can see you can create a very quick animation like that. Now remember this diamond here? Well there are other shapes that will indicate what kind of animation interpolation will be applied. Let's go ahead and right click and you can see that we have toggle hold keyframe which basically means every keyframe will snap to it. We can do that by adding that right there, adding another keyframe here and another keyframe here. And within this amount of animation you can see that the animation is very different. Over here, let's go ahead and create one more keyframe, but this time, let's use Keyframe Assistant and go Easy Ease. We'll need to create another frame right here. What Easy Ease does, basically it gives it a slight slowdown and a speed up to the animation. This allows you to smooth the animation very easily. We're not going to get too much into animation appeal right now. 
For now, have a play around with this particular feature. You can also apply it to the scale. And of course the rotation. Now don't be deceived about this very simple animation. After Effects is extremely powerful and you can create high quality feature film level animations with this tool. But for now, we're just going to stay as simple as possible and you can get to that point over time. There are a few other tools that I do want to point out. If we select the bottom one right here, we do need to label our layers properly because over time as your project gets more complicated, things can easily get lost. You can change the length of the layer. You can also duplicate using Control D. You can also change the color of your layers. This doesn't affect the layer itself, only the labeling color. Another thing you do want to know about is the masking system. You can use the rectangle tool by clicking and holding down and you can also expand it to find other tools that are available. For example, we're going to use the ellipse tool to create a circle. Now to create a circle, you can just simply drag and drop like so, but you can hold control to snap it to the center. And you can also hold shift at the same time to maintain its proportions. The masking system is also quite powerful if you use the pen tool, for example. We can create something that looks a little bit like this. And there are plenty of ways to get the shapes that you desire. Playing with the tangent lines here allows you to change the smoothing. And once you are done with this project, you can export this entire 10 second clip into a MOV file. Head up into Composition, Add to Render Queue, and then simply ensure that the render settings is under Best Settings, the Output Module, Although there are many different versions of this, you can use lossless, but I prefer to use ProRes HQ, as this is a great balance between file size and quality. Simply change this to your desired file name and then hit render. Okay, so let's talk about hotkeys. Now hotkeys or shortcuts, they are very important to any workflow. The last thing you want to be doing is going around clicking various tools one at a time, trying to figure out how to get to them. Using hotkeys will help you complete your goals faster. And these little micro goals add up over time. They don't take long and it's very easy to memorize. Just make sure you have a bit of a practice and set up After Effects so that you get your muscle memory in. Now the first key we want to talk about is V. V simply is a selection tool. You don't really need to press this button because a lot of times you can go ahead and select objects as you go. But in case you need to, go ahead and press V. Your middle mouse wheel allows you to zoom in and zoom out. Or scroll up and down your timeline right here. Control D, we've already mentioned, duplicates your current selection. If I use Control D right now, we can go ahead and do that. It's similar to copy and paste, but it's not something I want to get into. Duplicating allows you to maintain some of the expressions and hierarchies, whereas copying will create a completely new instance. Don't worry too much about that for now. Just keep in mind that Control D allows you to duplicate your selected objects. Pressing space allows you to go ahead and play your timeline as we mentioned before. But if you hold space and drag, it allows you to pan around in your composition right here. Using combination with your mouse wheel, this will allow you to navigate very quickly inside of your viewport. Pressing plus or minus allows you to zoom in and out of your timeline, very important. 
Holding shift and control allows you to select multiple layers. Now let's go ahead and delete four of these. Now we move on to the attributes. Remember the attributes we've shown you just before? Well, we can access them by pressing P for position, T for opacity, S for scale, R for rotation, and A for the anchor attribute. If you want to reveal multiple ones like we've seen right here, you can hold shift and press the corresponding letters that I've already just mentioned. Now every object has an anchor point and this is revealed by this tiny little anchor point right here. It's the same as accessing the anchor point in the attributes like so. But if you want to move it within the composition, you can press Y and simply drag and drop your anchor point to where you desire. You can hold control and this allows you to snap to various parts of the object itself. Now for this next part, I'm going to create a couple of keyframes, nothing in particular. But say your layer looks like this and we have keyframes. You can reveal all keyframes by pressing U. Double tapping U allows you to reveal all keyframes and expressions. Now let's add a glow effect like we did before. But if you wanted to say delete all of these effects in one go, you can select the layer, hold Control Shift E to delete all effects in that selected layer. Now we've created a solid before, so if we go Control Y, this allows us to go ahead and create a new solid for our project. This solid here can be colored any way you wish. If you want to access the solid settings again, hold Control Shift and Y, and this allows you to access the color panel. You can also play around with the width, the size of the actual solid. Pressing G allows you to access the pen tool and using the pen tool you can create a mask manually. Now to keep your project tidy we do need to use the trim tool. Similar to this by dragging the clips like so. You can use a hotkey of Alt, Right and Left parentheses. This allows you to snap the in and out point of the layer itself. And it will trim to the header right here. Now without pressing Alt you can press left and right parentheses to shift the layers based on the in point straight to the header itself. Pressing the right parentheses does the opposite. Keep in mind that when you press the right parentheses, it keeps it about one frame behind. So anything after that one frame, you're going to have to manually drag it so that you don't have any flash frames. Now we can set an in and out point for our render. This bar here is called the work area. This is what will be rendered out. So if you wanted to render your project from 0 to 6 seconds, let's say, you'll need to drag it like so. Or you can use the hotkeys for B and N for the in and out point. After you're done with this, you can send it back to the render queue. Just like in under composition, you can go to add render queue. You go ahead and select control M to send it directly to the render queue here. So that's basically all of the hotkeys. Go ahead and check the cheat sheet out so that you know exactly what the hotkeys stand for. We're going to be using most of the hotkeys for our motion graphics project and I'll demonstrate the fastest way to work. 
Okay, now let's talk about our composition settings. Remember when we were creating our composition right here? If you go down here, create a new composition, you'll get this window with all the attributes for that particular composition. However, if you already have one and you want to make any edit, simply con hit Control K and this will allow you to make your edits. Usually I like to keep it at around 1920 by 1080. That's the typical resolution for most televisions and HD YouTube videos these days. You can definitely change this to say 4K, but I usually like to work at 1080p. This is why we call it 1080p because the height is 1080 pixels and we are using what's called progressive. We're not going to get into that too much because it does get a little bit complicated, but all you really need to know is this is the resolution you want to stick around on. The frame rate, I live in Australia, so we have a frame rate of 25 frames per second. If you live in the US, you'll end up using 29.97 frames a second. Don't ask me why that is the case, that's how their televisions work. Other formats include 60 frames a second, which is quite popular among YouTube videos. But in most cases, I like to stick to 25. Now you have presets up here, which you can use. We can go to UHD, which is the 4K resolution I was talking about. You can play around with some of these other settings right here, but the higher the resolution, the slower your preview is going to be. So I'm not gonna play around too much with this. That, those are the settings that you want to stick with. Okay, we're gonna create a very simple motion graphics logo. This is only 10 seconds long. First thing we need to do is open up a new project and we're going to go right click and in new composition. Generally speaking, these are the settings that you want to use for your project. So we wanna make sure that the duration is 10 seconds. Frame rate is at 25 frames per second and we have the width and height at 1920 by 1080. You can change the frame rate to something like 30 frames per second if you're in the US or even 2997. But I'm in Australia so I'm gonna to stick to 25. Let's open this up. Now the blank slate right here is the composition. What we need to do is we need to bring in our clouds, drag and drop it inside. Now don't forget to rename your composition. So we'll call this company logo. Let's drag and drop the clouds into the scene. Now this cloud is actually 4K, so it's essentially double the size of our composition. We're going to press S to reveal the scale and we're just going to reduce it to 50% of its size. That way we have a 4K video inside of a 1080p video right here. Next, we're gonna create the kaleidoscope. Let's type in KA and usually it will be called CC Collider. Drag and drop it in and you have the effects controls right here. We wanna change this to unfold and let's move the size up until you have it around say 100 or so. 112 is enough. What this does is it creates the kaleidoscope effect that we're going to use to stylize our entire video. I'm not gonna make it any more difficult than this so you can leave everything else as it is. The next thing we wanna do, because this is just a five second clip, we need to expand this by right clicking, go to time, and we go to time stretch. This will give us the window. I wanna change the stretch factor to 200%. Basically, it means it's going to stretch it from five seconds to 10 seconds. So this video is now half speed. Because it's half speed, you're, it's actually skipping frames. So we need to do a couple of things. First, we need to use something called frame blending. Traditionally, you use a frame mix. This essentially just fades between each frame to fill in the blank. But After Effects has a relatively new feature called Pixel Motion, and this will create an actual frame in between those missing frames and create a motion difference. Now the effect is actually very subtle, but we're not gonna get into that right now. All we know is that this five second clip is now 10 seconds and it should look smooth as we animate it. Now let's go ahead and add an effect. We're gonna create a black and white theme. Let's go HUE and we're gonna drag the hue and saturation effect onto our layer. You can see that the effect controls, this will show up right here. Let's turn the master saturation down. Let's go back to our effects, type in curves, drag the curve effect in. And what we wanna do is wanna really bring down the low end of the shadows and give it a lot more contrast. 
So it's a very simple S curve. So we bring the low end down and over here, let's go ahead and click and bring the high end up slightly. Let's not go too nuts for now. We'll leave it as around here. Next, we're going to create the text. We we'll go to layer, new and create text. You can use the shortcuts if you want. I'm going to call this my company. Here's another thing you also want to keep in mind. In terms of how your text looks in what, in what you are designing, you want to make sure you use a font or typeface that is quite well done. Anything that is default, for example, Arial, is not going to look too great. It looks a little bit too plain. With the downloaded font, let's go ahead and find Meticular. This looks a lot better. I'm going to change the size to 80. With that text here, let's just move this down. You can hold shift to snap the movement to any of these axes. Up here, we have the rectangle tool. You can use it to create shapes. I'm just going to go ahead and point it in the center and hold and drag. I'm going to hold control and shift to ensure that I maintain proportions. And by way of simplicity, we're just going to control D by duplicating this and we're going to resize the square. This is a very simple logo. There's really nothing to it, but this is how we're going to be doing our tutorial. Let's select these three and we're going to move it up slightly here. Next thing we want to do is add an animation to this. Selecting these two, you go ahead and right click and then hit pre-compose. This creates a new composition with the selected layers inside. Let's rename the pre-comp by typing pre-comp text logo. Very important that we rename our compositions because over time as your project grows larger, having clear defined names for your compositions is very important. Now we have a composition that contains all of the elements that we've selected. Down here we have something called continually rasterize. Essentially this maintains the vector style of the entire object here. What we want to do is hit S. Let's create a keyframe. Pull that keyframe to the very beginning. And here we're going to create another keyframe and turn it up to 110% and pull that keyframe all the way to the end. Now, if we turn this to quarter, you can see that our company logo now has a very slight movement. If the movement isn't satisfactory, you can certainly go to the end keyframe and turn it to 120%. Now remember the choppiness here inside of After Effects is normal. So if you ever have trouble, hit the resolution down sample factor but pop up right here. All right, this is looking pretty good, but we need to add a few effects to get this to a polished level. Let's go up and create a new solid. I want this to be black. And to illustrate how we organize our compositions, let's turn the label here to yellow. This is going to be our vignette. Up here we have the rectangle tool. Click and hold. And we're going to use the ellipse tool. Now we can go ahead and drag it in like so. But another great feature of After Effects is you can actually just double click. And it will create a mask based on the size of the layer. Now this mask can be revealed by pressing M multiple times. What we want to do is turn this to a subtract and we want to use the mask feather. Let's bring this up to around 260. I'm also going to use mask expansion and bring the mask up just so that the vignette only hits the edge of the entire video. This gives this a slightly more old film look. Next thing we want to do is to do some final color grading and I'm going to add an adjustment layer. Let's go back to our effects and presets and we're going to drag curves on top of it. The adjustment layer basically affects everything underneath this particular layer. What we want to do is bring the mids slightly down. 
will bring the base of the blacks a little bit higher than usual. And we'll also bring the top of the whites down a little bit. This gives this entire video a slightly more noir look, and that's the design we're looking for. One final thing is we want to add a fade in. Let's hit layer, new, solid. This will be solid number two. And we want to bring this entire solid down to about one second. Let's hit T to reveal opacity. Create a keyframe. Put 100% at the very beginning and then just turn it down to 0% at the very end. Now we want this to be underneath the adjustment layer and the vignette. Let's go ahead and do that. And we have our final video. What we want to do is render this out. So hit composition, add to render queue. The settings you want to use is usually ProRes. If you click here, you can reveal the setting that is currently on. So we use QuickTime format, go to format options. Generally, any of these ProRes settings are ideal. I like to use 422HQ as it's a great balance between quality and file size. Let's hit OK, and then hit Render. And so this is our final video.